So I've started um, flying this simulator now. It's the DCS uh, P51D, and it's an old school plane. It's got a big propeller on the front. Probably recognise it. Probably seen them before. It's the one with the the big scoop on the bottom down here. But um, being an old school plane, uh, trim is a big thing. So um. There's these trim wheels here, and you use them to adjust tiny little flaps of metal that are on the uh, trailing edge of the various control surfaces. And at present, I've got them hooked up to the trim hat on the top of my um, joystick here. And as you can see, they rotate as I hold down the stick. Not extremely sort of visceral or realistic feeling. Um, you lose the feedback of their position. As you can see, they're sort of cylindrical with knurled sides, and there's two on top and one on the side. Um, I had a spare Teensy microcontroller. It's similar to an Arduino, but a bit more lightweight. There it is. Um, I had a spare one of these laying around, so I popped over to JCAR, and I figured I'd build one of these. So it's got two knobs on the top, a knob on the side for the elevator. That's Adderon and rudder and then three more knobs just because there's plenty of other knobs in here that I could hook it up to like, I don't know, that one that can twist I'm not entirely sure what it does but it sure would be good to be able to twist it um, so I went to JCAR, which is a local electronic shop and I bought this plastic box plastic out of, because I'm cheap you can get an aluminium one, thick aluminium similar to my AHCP over here uh, but it was like 35 bucks, and this was 7 so I just thought I'd go for the plastic one. And I got 6 little um, 10k linear potentiometers. And I'm going to hook them up to this, put a bit of software on there, and uh, have it show up in the game as a 6-axis uh, uh, analog input doohickey. And so then I can do away with this uh, not really, yeah, not very authentic feeling trim hat. There we go. So our potential is pretty simple. It's got three legs. One I'm going to put five volts on. Another one I'm going to put ground on. And then the third pin, which is usually the center one, uh, is the goes to the analog input. There's a shitload of them on this thing. Um, if I'm reading that right, 10, 11, A11. Um, so yeah, it's a pretty simple circuit. 5 volts one side, ground on the other, and then I read off the value of the, the potentiometer. Um, yeah. At the center it'll be showing 2.5 volts, at one extreme it'll be showing 5, at the other extreme it'll be showing ground. Easy peasy. So I roughly traced around this, and I found a couple things that I'd like to roughly, you know, rough sizes of things, just roll the tape and a little buzzer that I had sitting around. I just, you know, laid it all out to me on the side there. Fortunately, this stuff has got little grid, 10 mil grid on the inside with pre-tapped or pre-dented holes to guide the drill bit in. So it should be pretty easy to get it all nice and square. I think that feels about right with one hand sort of here, twisty, 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 one hand here, little thumb. It's going to be cool. Okay, I've got all the holes punched out with my handy dandy punching tool. And the threaded section on these pots is 7mm so I'm gonna go get a M7 drill bit and drill those holes out okay holes drilled nice and clean uh, where is it there we go poop pot poking through bung a little nut on the front there tighten it up sweet okay so I've got all the hardware mounted they're on there wound up on the side there I must forget about that one. Uh, put a 10mm hole in the back there for the uh, tent seat to line up with the back. Goes on the top. Goes on. Nob, nob, nob. Looking good. Now to uh, do the wiring. Okay, I'm in my workshop, which is 90 degrees opposite my desk. Some of the cabling plumbed in now. I've got red for 5 volts, black for ground, and blue for sense. And I got them routed up to the top. And the 
and let it go on top of there. Very nice. Um, I've got the micro over here, the Tinsy. And I've attached a little um, power distribution board there just because there'll be a lot of the 5 volts and ground coming back to there. So it's good to have some place to attach everything to. And then all the blues will attach to all the analog inputs on this one. Very nice. Okay, lots of uh, boring and tedious soldering later. I've got all of my potentiometers loomed into a little distribution board there, and all the blue sense lines from the center of all the potentiometers goes to the micro, and also one on the side there. Now I'm just going to glue that one down there and uh, power it up. See how we go. Okay, I've got it all plumbed in now. All nicely wired down there. Got a little distribution board up there. Got a little microprocessor down there. I put a hole in the back there. I mounted the micro with the USB showing. And it's just a matter of clipping it all together and writing some code and also putting the knobs on. Dun dun dun! 3D printer. Okay, so the hardware side of things is getting close to being complete. I had a minor snafu. I picked up uh, logarithmic pots instead of linear pots. The box was mislabeled at the shop. Minor snafu, but I went and resoldered them all, so back to where I was. Um, now, everything's electrically good. Now, a part of these kinds of projects that kind of intimidates a lot of people is the coding side of things. And you go, oh my god, I'm not a programmer. Um, now you step you through the entire process of creating the code for this. Step one, grab the uh, the example they provide for the complete USB joystick. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Find the bit that says joystick X, Y, Z, Z rotate, slider left, slider right. Analog read 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That sounds pretty much like what I want. Copy, paste, run and then it downloads and then you open up the control panel thingy in uh, Windows run the calibration and kabam you've got axes responding you just, you just twist them and it's, it's similarly simple to set up the buttons you see there's 32 buttons down here that are defined but I haven't got anything driving to them it would be trivial for me to put a switch on the side here and hook it up to one of the digital inputs or use one of the analog inputs as a digital input, you can do that. And um, yeah, set up as many buttons as I can eat. Sorry about the barking dogs. But um, yeah, you know, that's the software side of things done. It took me 25 minutes. Uh, now to get those knobs sorted out. <laughs> knobs. So my favourite tool for 3D design is OpenSCAD because you do it all in programming stuff. So I started with a, a sort of a flat, flattish cylinder and then I was like uh, it needs a flange on top, so it looks nice. And then put a thing on top of that, and then uh, put some knurling around the outside, and then uh, gotta put uh, a hole in the bottom for the potentiometer to seat in there, and then uh, put a little arrow on top, so you know which way is zero. Simple. That's like uh, 60 lines of code. And it's all, all parametric, which means that if I were to, you know, say if I wanted to make it uh, higher, I can just change this 20 here to a, a 30, and then save. Oops. Save. And everything is scaled, like these things on the side here scale appropriately, and the arrow is in the proper place, and everything follows suit. Likewise, if I wanted to increase the diameter a little bit save that and bam it's very versatile my favorite tool for those reasons so I'm gonna print off one of those see how it feels and if I like it I'll print off another one and uh, now I'm gonna design the uh, elevator trim it's a big wheel that goes on the side here and then I'll do these little ones alrighty printer on sand spinning good sign Get software, find a mouse, connect, load file, uh, 
Where is it? Trim wheels. Load up model. Thinking, thinking, thinking. Triangulating mesh, doing complicated sounding things. Beep boop, beep boop, bop. Beep boop, boop. Beep boop, beep. There it is. So that's. Let me see if I can. No, I can't do this with one hand. But you can preview the code here and check that all the layers look right. But that looks pretty good. And print. Oh, doing stuff. Doing stuff. So that will do its thing, and then uh, a little while we'll get to pull the print off and have a look. Doot, 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 doot. Sweet, all done. There it is, fresh off the printer. I had to clean up the bottom hole a little bit, but um, otherwise, pretty sweet. Good. Very nice. These pots have got 300 degrees range of motion. That should be more than enough. Um, eventually I want to work out a way, a nice reliable way of having a centre detent so I can just sort of seat it home by feel. Um, but in reality, it's not going to be that useful for this kind of thing. Alright, that works well. Also it clips on there pretty nicely. Alright, time to print another one. So I've uh, jumped the gun a little bit, and while I'm waiting for that to finish printing, I've uh, set up these axes. So right now I've got just one knob, and um, a little bit go. I can make very small, precise adjustments to the setting. Move the knob a little bit, and I'm losing game. Oh, that's incredible. Elevator. Rudder. Amazing. Uh, I've also bound the uh, hot air and the whatever the hell that does. I think it determines where the carburetor gets its air from. And also bound the uh, angle of the flaps. So you should be able to look out the window and see the flaps change. Flaps go down, flaps go to 50%, flaps go up. Incredible. Now to get those other uh, knobs printed out and attached. And here is the finished piece. I've got the knobs on there, knobs on there. I designed that one to have a Slightly bigger uh, bite taken out of the top for the knurling, um, so I could tell when it was at the top. And I just made these slightly smaller versions of that, but with a dome on top instead of a flat top. Um, now, in terms of things I would have done differently, or like things I would do in the ideal world, um, I would probably get a box that's not so high. Um, I figured I'd need a high box because I wanted a relatively large. Um, elevator trim wheel similar to the actual sim or the actual aircraft but it turned out to be not really that necessary I can get the required precision with this one pretty easily um, in the ideal world I put it in a metal box like that one um, you can get those but they're you know, three times as expensive so I went with a plastic one just for this but if I was to make another one I would make it out of nice die cast aluminium um, I'd probably also use black plastic. I just uh, used blue plastic for the, the printed parts because it was the plastic currently hooked up to my printer. Got a big spool of it down here. And I do have some black plastic but it's a bit of a pain to swap the colours over so I just stuck with the blue. And I reckon black would look better. Um, I could also make these more similar to the actual things and like have um, relief letters and arrows and such and just like the real things. I would also probably um, get a USB-B, proper USB socket, and put that on the back rather than just having the USB cable poking through like I do here. That's fine, but you know, if I wanted to do it properly, I'd use a, an actual doodad to do it properly. But all in all, I'm pretty happy. Works well. Um, sweet. 
Oh, I also might put some little rubber skids on the bottom so it doesn't slide around so easily. But yeah, awesome. Alright, very good. And uh, a couple more things that I just thought of that I'd like to improve. Um, if you remember the wiring inside, it was all starred out from the distribution board at the back here. That is a little bit wasteful. Um, it would be better to sort of uh, hop from one to the other. I could save on a fair bit of cabling and a bit of complexity by doing it that way. Um, now, the, in terms of the parts I used, um, I used, well, for the potentiometers, I used a Bravo 10 kilo potentiometer, that's B10K, which is a 10K potentiometer, and the B means it's a, a linear, and A means logarithmic, so make sure you get the linear ones if you want to build one of these. Um, for the microcontroller, I used uh, the Tensi, uh, the Tensi 2.0. Um, they're awesome general purpose little things, you can use them to emulate a keyboard or a mouse or a joystick or a serial device or you know, tons of stuff. They're super handy and they're relatively cheap too, they're like 16 US dollars. Um, there's that one which has got, what, uh, 30 odd I.O. Um, if you want something bigger you can go for the, the Tensi++ which has the same USB emulation capabilities as the, the Tensi 2.0. Um, but it's just got more, more I.O., more memory, more, you know, stuff to play with. Um, but, yeah, for most purposes, this is good enough. Um, I'll magically make a link appear here, using YouTube magic, to where you can buy these. Um, yeah. Very good. Uh, here's a link for where you can download the model files and the SCAD files for uh, all the printed plots and here's a link for where you can download the code for the joystick stuff okay that's all bye